on those domes today. This y'all day y'all like to play church, right? This is the day we all say we're going to do the will of God. So today I'm going to read the word of God. We ain't going to play feel good. We ain't going to play check the box. Oh, the day was Sunday. I went to church. I did the God thing. Check. I'm good. No, you are not good. Now is the time that y'all start paying for when y'all say y'all believed in God. Now you get called out. Now we're going to see if you meet the criteria to be a, a follower of the Most High God. Not per me, not per you, but per what God actually said. That's usually the best way to do it, too. So nobody in their feelings, nobody in their emotions, either you could do it or you can't. And you get called out on it. Either you fix it or you don't want any parts of it. That's what we have. That's our decisions in dealing with God. You don't get to call it the way you want to call it because the world will look exactly like the way it's looking. And everybody are talk about we don't know how it got here. Oh, we know how it got here. You say that you follow God and you don't actually listen to his word. So Proverbs 28 and 9 is where I want to start at today for all the people to say, pray for me, pray for me, please pray for me. It's time you be quiet with that pray for me BS. This is what God said about prayer, right? Proverbs 28 and 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Now what you going to do? You're going to find a way that to maneuver around what God said, right? <laughs> it's, really, it's really not laws that, that cause you to do anything extra. It just causes you to get out of your own selfish shit. But we don't want to do that. We want to keep lying, keep running back and forth to this place every Sunday. And you don't learn anything. Matter of fact, y'all don't like to hear the word of God. That's why you go to that place. You get a, a pastor after your own heart. Somebody that don't know anything about God, and he feeding you exactly what you want to hear. So you thinking that you're getting it. That's the equivalent of eating a box that food came in. The nutrients are in the actual food. You ate the box. Got filled up off the box, the bullshit. Ain't no nutrition in there at all. The real nutrition, you don't have nothing to do with. That turned you off. You can't even look at it. Um, you hear a lot of women saying they're waiting for God to send them a man, right? And not to be chauvinistic. Well, I don't really care what women think at this point because I'm speaking on behalf of God. And if you get offended, good. I'm not apologizing. First and foremost... God created man and woman at the same time, right? So they need each other. Any of you women talking about you don't need a man, go fuck yourself. Literally. You know what I'm saying? I mean that in a double entendre. Go fuck yourself and see if you can reproduce. The first thing that God gave, the first order, is to be fruitful, right? Fertile. Replenish the earth. So check yourself right there, strong black woman, whoever. Another thing. Adam is another creation story. He was in the garden alone. To be complete, God gave him a help meet, which is a woman, right? So therefore, man is not complete without a woman. And if a man can't be complete without a woman, guess what you ain't without a man, sister? Incomplete. So when you running around talking that you don't need a man shit, sit your wicked ass down. And that's one of the reasons why you don't get a man. One of the things that's wrong with men is they are seduced by women. We called to do some things and women are called to do other things. If we acted in who we supposed to be, everything would be okay. That woman ain't never changed from the beginning. She was inquisitive. She was out and about. She was wandering around in the garden. God gave man the order. Don't do X, Y, Z. You got seduced, men. By those batting eyes, by those hips, those curves, whatever it is, you're still getting caught up in it today. But you got charged with order. Not her. You know what I'm saying? If you be a vessel of honor, then she'll want to be with you. 
And this is another problem. Ladies, you chasing vessels that ain't of no honor. And then asking about why you going through all this shit you going through. If you knew what a man of God looked like, you could attach yourself to him. You don't know what God is. That's why you keep getting fucked over. You By God, not by what you want. Because you don't have the standards that God had. That's why you keep getting screwed over. Read the script. God will show you how to identify one of his men. And it don't mean he got a job. He can provide all those things that you, you came up with. Why don't you see what God said one of his men looked like? Then you can gravitate towards one of those men. What's up, V? It's always that I need a good man. I need a good man. I need a good man. But are you a good woman? Not by your own standards. Because you might drop your kids off at grandmama house every week to go out. And you think you providing for them. No, that ain't of God, right? So you got something else on your mind. You're not even focused. And you talking about you a good woman. By who and what terms are you a good woman? By your own? Because that's just an opinion. You know, by my, by my terms of what a good woman is, is different from another man's what a good a term of what a good woman is. But God's is the same across the board. It's like the recipe to have the same thing over and over again. It's consistency. It won't flux this way. It won't flux that way. It's the same. And that's what these scripts are for. It's not for religion. It's so you get the same result over and over again. So the title of this is Proverbs 28 and 9, right? He who turns their ear from hearing the law, even your prayer is an abomination. He that turns his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. So... You asking, what's up, Sean? You asking people to pray for you. What's up, bro? What's good? You asking folks to pray for you, right? If you turn in your ear from hearing the law, the prayer is an abomination. I know all that other stuff feel good that we've been learning all those years. The, the cliche, pray for me. Pray for what? If you not a law keeper, how are you praying for law? You know what I'm saying? If, if you outside of something... You can't pray to be in, inside of it. And we got order. You know, uh, contrary to popular belief, we do have order. Otherwise, we have what we have outside. When I feel like somebody wronged me, I should do whatever I want to them per me, right? My rules. You feel the same way. Hi. What's up, bro? Um, It's journeys, that's all, that's all, um, Sean, you've been moving and, and becoming who you are right now, and when we meet up with people, people bring something out of our character, they grow you in one way or the other, they open something up in you, you know what I'm saying, and you, you gotta be appreciative for everybody that you meet, because it kind of shape you into the person that you are, be it negative or positive. Something in people bring a reaction out you and it shows some of your character. So I'm definitely grateful. You know what I mean? Like even at that time, being young, we was a lot younger than, you know, learning who you become. And that go into raising your generation and your kids. So all of it's good, bro. As long as we learn from it and keep moving on. You know, um, when we was working at that job, it was a lot of things that that wasn't a reality then. You know what I'm saying? Like, how are we doing this right now? This wasn't a reality to FaceTime each other or to be in this situation. And nobody was thinking of that back then. You dig it? But now it is reality. And we grow the same way. We got to keep moving. And um, all our steps is a part of that. You know, looking back on it. All the stuff we held on to, the things that we thought was the most important thing in the world at the time. Then you grow a little bit. You have kids and family. You look at yourself and you see the silly shit that you was actually, you know what I'm saying? When you look back, when you become an adult and you see the stuff that you held in this high regard, you see the stuff that meant everything to you back then. And sitting back looking at your kids grow up, you're like, damn, that wasn't nothing. You know what I'm saying? How many times... That you come close to death or you get into a situation 
that ain't really mean anything sitting back. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's some people that never grow from that shit. They just sit in that same spot. Like, you can't be the same dude you was at 18, at 28, 28 at 30. Like, something wrong with that. You know, even messing up, you got to learn something. You dig it? If you burn cooking, you burn your hand in the fryer, you know to watch yourself the next time you change the fryer, right? But why don't we get that as human beings, right? And my thing right now is I'm in this word, right, Sean? But I ain't, I ain't into religion. I'm still the same dude that that was at that restaurant. But now, instead of what my attributes are, the pettiness, the combativeness, the stubbornness that I am, that God created me in, I use that for his word to hold that down, right? And it's not that much difference. Nothing changed in my life that much, except I stopped fronting on the book and start actually doing some of the things that's in there. And it don't matter if it sit right with other people. So persons just don't like to learn. Pretty much, it's it's painful. You know what I'm saying, bro? It's It's painful to have to say I was a fuck up. It's painful to have to say I was wrong about shit. But at the same time, it's a prison. If you don't do it, you imprisoning yourself and then you allowing other people to imprison you too. Because people can't wait to come up and say, I remember blah, blah, blah. So when you're dealing with people like that, that's the energy you don't need in your life, you don't want in your life, because obviously you trying to move in another direction. And they come and saying, I remember this. Yeah, you keep remembering that. Get on with it and keep moving. You know what I'm saying? That's the separation of God right there. Anybody trying to run up from your past, it's a reason they back there, right? It's a reason that people back there. You went this way, they went that way for whatever it was. That's what God had going on. Some people you'll come back in contact with. That's what God got going on, right? You'll never have to run after anything. That's another thing that I learned. What's up, nephew? When the most high take things out your life, even though it's painful, even though you're struggling with it, he moving on your behalf. You can't fight it. You know what I'm saying? As sure as it probably was a woman in all our lives, maybe 10 years ago, is that the same woman in your life today? Did she stay there all that time? Me personally, I, I have the same person in my life, right? And it's not because of me. It's because of God. I did everything possible, man, manhood-wise, right? Everything in my power I did to destroy what God put in my life. And I'm and I'm out with it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the power right now. I know why I have what I have. So no matter what I did at that time to mess up what God put in my life, I'm still with the same person. So you chasing a person, trying to make that person be in your life, it ain't gonna work. You know what I mean? When God start pulling shit away from you, understand it. You know, like, yeah, stuff hurt. It, it do hurt. But growth is something else. You can't stop growth. It's going to happen. And the fight against that is the fight against God. And sometimes he helping you out more than you realize. You know, you gravitate to shit that ain't good for you. We all do it. I know it in my heart. Right today, I still have the same urges. I still have the same temptations. I'm still the same person. What's different is the practice that I have in walking and not dealing with that shit now. I cut everything off until I was strong enough to be around it. You know, basketball, skating, anything that got me outside of what I needed to do. It's like working out, right? You go to the gym every day. At first, it's a struggle. Then the days that you don't go to the gym, you feel like a part of your life missing because Damn, I didn't let this down. So that's what your life in God becomes. It's a daily walk to where it's not a struggle. It's like it's, it's as natural as you sinning. When you start pursuing that word, it ain't church. It ain't religion. And I talk the same way I talk. And only, only thing that I'm not trying to offend is God, right? So the way I learned not to offend him is I actually got into his word. To see what was pleasing to God. And you'd be surprised. I smoke a gang of weed every day. And I comb through that book. Trying to find where God said not to do it. Guess what? I didn't find it. But what I did find in there. Is God don't like us eating shrimp. 
crab meat, lobster, dolphin, squid, all these things that he said not to do that people do every day. But if I say a word like fuck shit, bitch, everybody that's claiming Christian or knowing God, like, oh man, why'd you say that? God wouldn't appreciate that or something to that matter. Well, go fuck yourself because God ain't never say anything like that. Now you being a liar, a bold faced liar. And if you don't know what God say, don't pretend and don't let it come out your mouth because now you're accountable. That's a lie. You are a liar. And when you start telling people that, they'll think about what they saying if God actually said it. So I'm out to offend you. If God didn't say it, you a goddamn liar. And that's what we need to start saying to people. Don't give them grace. Don't let them keep bending the word. Once they get the word in them, then you can give them grace because then you know they pursuing the word. But up front, nah. This military, get in the line and get the fuck out the line. Don't play that, yeah, I'm in the army, but then your foot locker fucked up. You can't break down your weapon. Your uniform don't look right, and you claim an army. You ain't army, nigga. You ROTC at best. Crossing guard. You know what I'm saying? Safety's in school. You think you got a uniform on, and it's the one for God, but it's not. And the reason that I'm here today is because it is an awakening, right? It's not safe for you pastors anymore with that bullshit word. It's going to be people more and more waking up with the real word, right? And people that know me, like my man Kool-Aid, nephew, y'all know I ain't no religious or no holy whatever. You dig it? You know where I come from, Kool-Aid, what I'm on. And I ain't talking nothing different now. I'm still the same person. It's just I understand the word of God as is written to make me better, to make me better than that person that was in the restaurant. You know what I'm saying? It's a walk. I can't be that same person and then raise kids. At that time, that's where I was at, right? I didn't know any better. Now I know better. So I got to do better. And people use that as a cliche, but it is what it is. And the minute we start doing that, a lot of these problems that we have, that we perceive we have, they'll move out of our way. I try to tell people all the time, the law is the way out. You know, if you if you don't have law, you don't have anything. It's what I say, it's what you say. Then it becomes the person with the biggest guns that actually rules. So if there's no treaty, if there's no law, then what is it? And the crazy part about us is our society is set up with God in mind. We pledge of allegiance, right? One nation under God. Public law, 97, 280 states that the Bible is in actuality the word of God, which is the law of the land. The Holy Scriptures is the law of the land, 97, 280. Public law, 97, 280. You swear on the Bible in the court of law, right? You don't swear on the history book. You don't swear on the math book, social study, English. You swear on the Bible, right? And the separation of church and state. Don't tell me God not powerful. He even got it in, in your constitution that you can get your freedom based off the laws of God. Your whole constitution is written off of what God said for us. Y'all know the laws of God? Fair judgment, two or more witnesses, even your credit. It comes from the Feast of Remissions. Every seven years, they were supposed to travel to Jerusalem, right? And have a big assembly. And any debt that you had was remissed. Your, your seven years bad luck, seven years credit, all of this is biblical. Everything that we do today comes out of the Bible. You hear people saying, you God, we all gods. God said that. Psalms 82 and 6. Ye all are gods. But the term God got us messed up, right? Our creator, our Elohim, it's disrespectful to call him a god, but that's what we've been knowing to call him because of these Greeks, these Romans, these myths. He's the beginning and he's the end. He is, he is, you know what I'm saying? I am the great and terrible power. You keep trying to look for a name to call him, but you understand an entity when you're looking at Marvel comics and all that shit, when it's this great ether, dark matter, you get that. But when it comes to the creator God, you're trying to put him in a frame, put a man body on him, put some kind of grieving image on him. And God is against grieving images. Let me give you the rundown about why it's no image of God, right? 
Once is an image, it's a debate. If I like the sun, you like the moon, somebody else like the ocean, now we're going to start revering these things. We have images of idols. So I like the sun. You like the moon. Now, man, you got to fight about which one is the best. God created both of them. You fighting over the creation instead of revering the creator, right? That's the problem with man. We see the creation and not the creator, and we keep trying to worship the damn creation. That's the issue. You worshiping Jesus, if it was a real Jesus, which it wasn't, that's a creation. If it was a Muhammad, that's a creation. If it was a noble Drew Ali, that's a creation. Who gave him life? Who put the life in him? That's what you revere, and that's the law you follow. Even with me, like, I'm just an oracle of his words. No prophecy, none of that. What his words say is what I say, right? No more, no less. If you can pick up some understanding from what I'm saying, good. But honor the most high is not my words. Ten years ago, my man Kool, well, longer than that, me and Kool-Aid worked at a job together. My man Sean, he know what I was. And, and it wasn't no horrible robbing, stealing. But deceit is strong too. When you deceitful, that's like murder. That's like homosexuality. That's like rape. If you break one of those law, statutes, and commandments, it's the same. You on the other side of righteousness. So if I ate shrimp, if I lied, if I deceived, it's the same as killing for our creator. It's not my right to judge it. I didn't make us. So if I'm going to be a part of this, what God said, then I'm going to go off of what his laws are. So when you, say, when you hear homosexuality... That ain't no different to me than murder. That ain't no different to me than eating out of the dietary law. I know that's hard for man to understand because you want to put your values on what God said. That's not going to work. That's why we live in a society that we live in. Perfect example and homosexuality, right? The most high God say you shouldn't lay with a man as you lay with a woman. That's an abomination. And we can look at it logical. Um, you can be mad all you want as a homosexual person. It's not condemning to homosexuals, but the logic in it is you can't reproduce, right? In a homosexual union marriage, you're going to have to go outside of what you want to do to get a regular couple with some people to have heterosexual sex to have a baby. Your colony couldn't exist without the natural order of God. Y'all understand what I'm saying? No matter how emotional you are behind it, no matter how much you want to call it, gay bashing, be mad, piss, scratch, kick, have your way, you just can't reproduce. And that's not a slap in your face. To eat your own, if you homosexual and want to have sex with the same sex, that's your business. I don't have nothing to do with that. Just don't make it my business. You know, like, I don't want to hear about a gay agenda because is it an agenda or is it something that you fall in short with? When you try to make it something for everybody, now you stepping on another realm. What I struggle with in my house, if I'm eating shrimp, lobster, any of that in my house, what's up, Tay? That's between me and God, right? Whatever I'm doing in my bedroom, that's between me and God. Because seafood is against God, like certain seafoods, crab, lobster, whatever. I'm doing that in my house. That's not between us. So nobody going to say, look at this motherfucker. He's supposed to be following God, but he out here eating crab, lobster, and some other stuff. I didn't put that out there to be judged because if I did, I'm supposed to be judged on it. If I'm following God and y'all see me eating any shellfish, get at me. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to hold me accountable. So if you following God and I see you, you out acting like a faggot, you out here, you know what I'm saying? Homosexuality and being a faggot is two different things. Homosexuality and the gay agenda is two different things. You don't get one fucking right from me because you gay, right? You get rights being a human being. I don't know you homosexual. That happens in your bedroom. I don't have to deal with your homosexuality. Your gayness, I got to deal with that shit. So you're definitely going to get gay bashed around me. When you try to force that shit in public saying I got a right to do X, Y, Z because I'm gay, fuck you and your gayness. Your homosexuality, that happens in your bedroom. That don't have anything to do with me. That's between you and God. You coming down the street dressed like a woman, acting like a fucking bitch, I should knock your head off. You understand? 
because that's against what God said. The same way if I see a murderer, if I see a nigga beating up a woman, me and you going to have issues, dog. I don't know what happened, but my daughter is a woman. My mama is a woman. Sometimes you just got to go out for what's right. And that's the same thing. So I offer fairness to everybody. I keep the laws of God. I don't press people. I'm not other than this on my own platform where I come out and say in general, not one person's name to another person's name. I'm saying in general. So if anybody feel in a way and need to say something on behalf of what they doing, you convicted personally because I don't know your name. You know what I'm saying? I don't know any of y'all names. So I'm putting it out there on behalf of God. And if you feel it and you feel some kind of way, then I am talking to you. You want me to shut up, right? You don't want to fix what's going on. But I ain't going to shut up. You know what I'm saying? Because the evil ain't going to stop. So I ain't going to stop. I'm going to make you feel a way rather than you make me feel a way because I'm doing what's on the books to do. And you say that you love God and you follow God. So if you are whatever that is, don't do it around people and then say, oh, I'm following God. Because now you got my God looking phony. You got people thinking that God don't really work. Or what's the word of God do? Why are we still in the same situation if God is real? God is real. You just not real. The way you serve him not real. So you putting a black eye on him. So now it's time that he raised assholes up just like me to challenge, to contend, because I don't care what y'all think of me. I ain't a holy man, right? I don't go to church, but your pastors, they gonna have to deal with me. You know what I'm saying? Straight up raw, and ain't none of them gonna be able to do it. They afraid right now. All you Facebook pastors, I know y'all shook, because it ain't nothing you can do with me. You don't know the word. Now your reckoning is coming. You understand now, you about to be called out. This is the age of discovery, and ain't none of y'all going to be able to stand up past this. Y'all first. Your time is coming. Y'all are first, because y'all misleading the flock. You claim you know the word, you're going to be the first ones. All you pastors, you dig it? Anybody that's calling yourself pastor, prophet, or any of that, your day coming on behalf of the Most High God, in front of everybody, too. Y'all going to be made to look like the lying fools that you are. Y'all ain't think that I just woke up. Like, I know a bunch of people know me from a bunch of different places. And I ain't crazy. And don't give a fuck if y'all think I'm crazy. Because y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But it's happening right now. So, I'm going to keep doing this. And especially on this wicked ass day that y'all call Sunday. Sunday. That's when he actually worship. The sun. Monday is when they worship the moon. All of this is Greek Roman shit. Your Jesus is a Greek God. His birthday, December the 24th or Christmas, Jeremiah 10 and 2. Read it. Jeremiah 10 and 2. See what it say about your Christmas. And then turn your back on God again, acting like you don't see what it says. So that's why people not coming to these lives coming to this actual word of God because once you see it then you convicted by it and people scared of God they like to play around God going to your little church on Sundays right it ain't gonna save you you seeing kids get killed straight bullets innocent kids your kids not innocent you gave your kids to another a God when you worship Christmas that's a pagan God you know it's pagan right it's for the kids you right, motherfucker. It's for the kids. That's your kids being given over to pagan deities. Easter, pagan deities. All of this stuff. And you think you innocent because you're not out killing. You're not out using drugs. You don't commit adultery. You're still not familiar with God. You got it in where you comfortable at. God ain't supposed to be comfortable for you. You're supposed to get comfortable with God. And until you do that... I'm going to be here, right? I'm going to be here making it real tough on behalf of God. Not me. Don't worry about Ev. You can say whatever you want about me. I can take that shit because I took it from myself first, right? Y'all the ones with the God egos that I'm going to crush and pull you right out of that shit on behalf of God. So two things going to happen. You're going to realize what the real word of God is or you're going to get the hell out all together. But that church on Sunday thing... 
It's not popping, chief. It's not popping. That Jesus thing, it's not popping. And actually, you start reading the word of God, it becomes a lot clearer. The problem is you are pulled into the BS of man. A lot of us didn't know. I understand that. At first, we didn't know. Now, you know. You got smartphones, technology, and you're not seeking out your creator. Everything else, you seeking out. Porn, people's fucking legal names, uh, court records, all kinds of stuff you seeking out. Using it all for evil, all the technology at your fingers. This is why God don't like a lot of stuff because you won't use it the way you're supposed to use it. For me, I'm using these scripts, right? I'm using this, this smart technology to find out about who we are, where we really came from. It's right there. It's right there. And it's all through these scripts. That's the amazing part about it. You ain't got to go through this history book. You ain't got to go through that history book. It ain't even in Africa. It ain't in Kemet. All of that stuff of cultures made up after the fact, right? Everything was created by God. Bottom line. Nothingness. We had one creator with no image, right? That's how it went down. Some people out the West Coast might have saw a rock and say, oh, this rock is a beautiful thing. Let us, let us worship the rock. Somebody else saw some water. What's up, Big E? Saying this water is beautiful. Let us worship the water. All these things got forms and images. God said worship no image. So now it ain't no contingency on what God looked like because he imageless. But you got to give him a Jesus image, a cross image, a Kabbalah stone image, a Buddha image. These images, we don't serve images. God has never been an image. No other gods, right? You can't make up something to worship and serve it and then say you're serving God. Those two things don't go together. So we either being truthful about what we're doing or we making up our own thing, right? Hey, I'm on them today, right? This there Sunday, the day that they go to that pagan establishment. So every Sunday, I'm going to come on here and wreck that shit till one of their phony ass pastors come on here and deal with me. On behalf of God. Until people get tired of it. Well I ain't going to get tired. You know what I'm saying. I'm going to be here with this word. Making people feel a way about it. And not good people. You know what I mean. Like everybody. Everybody not bad. Everybody just don't know. You know what I'm saying. Some people going to hear. And they going to gravitate towards it. And start trying to learn on their own. Exactly right bro. Then other people are going to hear it and try to dumb it down so they can stay where they at. And they don't think God know that shit. Your life is not going to change. You lying to yourself. You want to repeat. Keep coming up with quick, get rich, quick schemes to try to get up out of. It's not going to work. Your life is supposed to be in abundance, right? Even if you don't have, when you following God, you're going to have. It's, it's not going to be a way that it's not a way for you. The problem is the way that we see is not God's way. You dig what I'm saying? When when you dealing with, hey, Pastor Walt, when you dealing with God, you not dealing with what you want. And that's the problem with these churches today. They telling you what they want you to hear. It's as simple as saying what God say. And once they start shuffling up the word, leave them alone. They lying to you. That go for any church. If they can't say God said it, they are lying to you. It's that simple. You don't need to have a long conversation. It's either yes or it's no. In law, that's what it is. I can ask one question to shut down every church and every pastor have to lie. Every pastor on the planet will lie to you and start trying to make it fit. Did God ever say Jesus was his son? Out of his mouth. Ask any pastor that. Watch him get the dancing and saying some stuff. That, that he really think he deep. And any pastor, I know he not that deep. It's theology school. It's basically the education that you learn, the same education that these historians gave you, right? The first place that you learned school was in the church house. So what they wanted you to hear is what they gave you. And you know how people don't research shit. We want to be the top scholar in their system. Not on your own. I want to learn what they told me the best. It's like learning a program for a game. 
You can put the lie in the game and then teach a nigga to program that same lie over and over again. But if he was intelligent, he'd be able to make that program himself. Get into it and see if that program is proper. That's not what we do. We regurgitate and send it over and over again. And then we get caught in the wrong, our pride getting away. Then we start lying. That's what happened in the church. These pastors and their pride, they not fit to study. So when you shut their shit down, their pride hurt them. Then they got to start lying on behalf of God. So now God looking like a sucker because the pastor don't know what time it is. You keep doing the same thing over and over and ain't no accountability. They keep telling you believe in Jesus. For what? For what? Where's the narrative of believing in Jesus? What does believing in Jesus do? We ain't going to be children no more, right? David saved Israel. The Messiah came with a sword. He actually saved them. You, you don't have to, bro. That's Greek mythology. That's what we've been taught because black people are too, too superstitious and scared. We won't read. We scared. We keep going on and on with the religion. We keep dying. Keep dying. Listen, you're going to die. All of us. That's a part of the plan now, right? But what he did promise that we could have was to live long and endure on the earth and be prosperous while we was here. He talked to Moses. Moses lived 120 years. Moses himself said, I'm too old to keep doing this. So God told Moses, the time has come for you to rest with your fathers. See, eternal life was never a part of what we had at the beginning. It could have been, but we got kicked out the garden before we got to that. We partook of the tree, right? The tree of knowledge. So then we got kicked out of the garden. The tree of life was in that. He never told us not to eat from that tree. He gave us one tree not to eat from, and we ate from that tree. So now you're going to die. It ain't no everlasting life. You could endure long in the land, but your ass is going to die. It's no everlasting life. And after we die, I don't know what's going to happen. I ain't going to make that lie up. I'm not God. I don't even know what happens when I'm asleep. If I don't dream, next thing I know is the morning. So I'm not going to lie to y'all about what, what death is. I can't do that. I'm not the most high. And any man that's telling you something, he a goddamn lie. You can tell him I said it. You don't know what the most high got on the other side. So stop lying, brother. The streets ain't paved with gold. We ain't going to have no slaves and none of that shit. Your heaven, your heaven is supposed to be right now. As above, so below. Y'all talk about the Lord's Prayer, right? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What's his rule? Big herd. Can we, one more time? Our Father, who art in heaven, give us this day all of that. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And check it out. God didn't even force you to do his will. He gave you choice. That's why it's evil. The only reason evil is here to give you a choice to see if you're going to choose God for real. So don't say God put the evil here because he did. But it's here as a choice for your wicked ass. The same way somebody shoot an innocent baby is the same way you have sex with somebody out of wedlock. If I'm up in a room about to get busy with another woman or my wife, I ain't asking God to show up and slap the penis out of her, right? You, you dig it? When you about to have sex out of wedlock, that's against God. You ain't saying, well, why God let you fuck that woman? It's the same thing with shooting somebody. You made the decision to shoot. Same way I made the decision to shoot. It's the same thing. But you don't want that reality. You want to say God caused it. No, your wicked ass did it. I was the one that was cheating. Ain't nobody put a gun to my head and say, cheat, cheat, cheat. Nigga, you out there on your own emotion trying to get some ass. So when you kill somebody and a baby die, that ain't God. That nigga that shot that gun on his own free will, he did that. God said don't murder. He already gave you the recipe for that baby not to get shot. But since you okay with maybe eating shrimp or homosexuality, that allowed a other thing in too, that murder. You're not good with murder, right? But you're good with the other stuff. 
Oh, well, the door is open. If you leave the door cracked for sin, whatever the wind blow in is what you deal with. So now are you innocent? What's your dietary law like? Do you eat shrimp? And, and I know it seemed petty to you, but you're not equipped to call it petty. That's God's law. So either you listening to God for the smallest thing to the largest thing. You don't have the right to call it. Either you want to be a part of this or you don't. Military time. When you enlist in the army, tell them, Big Herd, do you get to say what you want? You understand that this is a goddamn army and you're going to do what they say or you're going to get the hell out. But we don't teach, treat God like that, right? Even your job, Big Chuck A, your job got parameters. Your job got times that you got to be there. Your boss say, be here from 9 to 5. If your monkey ass ain't there at 9 o'clock, you on the phone repenting to your boss. Oh, boss, yeah, I'm sick. My bad. I ain't, it ain't going to happen no more, right? That's what you do at your job. When you mess up with God, do you have that same energy? Oh, my goodness. You know what, Most High? I done messed up. My bad. I ain't going to do that no more. Help me out. That's, that's repenting. You get on that phone out of fear from your boss. Your ass scared you're going to lose that job. But to God, oh, everybody do it. It ain't nothing. Nigga, y'all playing. That's why we live the way we live. It's that serious and it's not at the same time. You understand? It's paying attention. That's why we pray daily to keep our minds focused on that. It ain't religion. I pray for focus. I don't pray for things because all the things are already mine as long as I walk in the order of God. I don't have to ask for shit. He already gave that to us. That comes with the covenant. Life and prosperity comes with keeping his law. That's it. I don't have to ask for shit. The reason you asking, because you ain't in line with God. That's, that's the only reason. No man can keep anything that God got for you. He can't keep it from you. You can't keep the punishments. You can't keep the rewards. You dig what I'm saying? All of it is yours. Any of y'all didn't go through anything, like, any mishap that happened to you, you went through that shit, right? You sitting right here now. At the time you was going through all of that, you ain't, you ain't think about the day, say, 10 years ago, you're going, oh, God, help me, God, help me, God. And you wasn't that serious about God. There's been times that he pulled you out of stuff you ain't even asked him to pull you out of, right? Just because of his righteousness alone. You ain't deserve it. You don't even know how to connect to him. And the first thing come out your mouth is the cliche, praise God. How, how do you praise him? You just say it out your mouth or you walk it out? You show people God or you tell people about God? When you hear people with the word of God, right? When people start reciting the word of God, this is what y'all need to know. When people say the devil, the devil knows the word of God up and down. He does. He can recite it to you better than I can. What he can't do is do it. See, I can do the word of God. The enemy of God can never do the word of God. That's how you separate yourself. When you want to see who about God, do God's word. And don't, don't have no emotions. If it's your mama, if it... Let me read something to y'all real quick, all right? Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is um, Deuteronomy 13. Deuteronomy 13, folks. Y'all got scripts? Hope y'all got y'all Bible with y'all. Deuteronomy 13. I'm not going to call out all the chapters. I'm just going to read down to about... I'm going to read down to about... Ten. I'm going to read from Deuteronomy 1 down to 10. See what God had to say. Be careful to observe only that which I enjoin upon you. Neither add to it nor take away from it. One more time before I go. Be careful to observe only that which I enjoin upon you. Do not add to it or take away from it. If there appears among you a prophet or astrologer, a dream diviner, and he gives you a wonder or a sign saying, let us follow and worship another God whom you have not experienced, even if the sign or wonder he names to you come true, do not heed the words of that prophet or dream diviner. For the Lord your God is testing you. 
to see whether you really love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Follow none but the Lord your God and revere none but him. Observe his commandments alone and heed only his worship. His orders worship none but him and hold fast to him. This God talking. As for that prophet or dream diviner, he should be put to death. That's Deuteronomy 13 down to, what's that, 10? That's, that's 13 and 6. Read Deuteronomy yourself. 13, right? Actually read the whole book. So I'm just giving you a little bits and pieces of what God said about the people that he's going to be dealing with, right? Let me see what it says. Stone him to death. For he sought to make you stray from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So God saying, if anybody come and telling you to follow them, put their ass to death. And so you hear the story unfolding about Jesus now, right? He came and said he was God. And the Romans got the story fucked up. They put him on the cross instead of stoning him to death. That blow the whole story right there because we stoned. We didn't crucify. That's a Roman story. It has nothing to do with the actual scripts of God. It's made up. If you hear it said of one of the towns that the Lord your God has given you to dwell in, that some scoundrels from among you have gone and subverted the inhabitants of their town saying, come let us worship other gods whom you have not experienced, you shall investigate and inquire and interrogate thoroughly. If it is true, the fact is established that abhorrent thing was perpetrated in your midst. Put the inhabitants of that town to the sword. Put his cattle to the sword. <laughs> God ain't no joke. So I'm not putting y'all to the, the physical sword. I'm putting y'all to the, the verbal sword. So y'all lucky. Anywhere else I had to kill your ass. So be thankful we not in the land of God. We somewhere else, right? But to the people that's keeping his orders, this is what he told us to do. You should be thankful. That's done away with because we not in our own land. But if we was in a land where Israel ran things like Donald Trump, you would be put to death for homosexuality. You would be put to death for murder. You would be put to death. That's if you chose to live in these walls. That's what we had in these walls. We wasn't going to have that shit. Now, you could do that in Sodom, Gomorrah, other towns, Amulex, the Hittites, all of those people. Y'all could do that inside these gates. We ain't having none of that. Thus saith the Lord. So don't leave the gate open or crack for somebody to come in with that nonsense. They tried that with Nehemiah, right? When they came and tried to come inside the gates to sell, you know where the terms lay hands on you come from? Nehemiah. I will lay hands on you if you try to come in this gate and sell. So he was talking about whipping some ass on behalf of the culture, not laying hands to heal you. If y'all try to bring that shit in here to sell, I'm going to whip that ass. That's in the scriptures. Check out Nehemiah for all y'all that think God is a man to be turning his cheek. God is a man to get it popping if you don't listen to him. That Christianity is gay, 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 gay. Gay. It's of Greeks, it's of Romans, it's of Spartans. When you see the movie 300, they flipped the scripts on y'all asses, right? They had the 300 people being the heroes of the movie when actually it was the Persians who were the good guys. Cyrus, King Cyrus, was a Persian. He destroyed Babylon and freed the goddamn Israelites. That's who we are. Didn't take one gold nugget from us, gave everything back on the hands of the Lord. Read Isaiah 44, 45. King Cyrus is not a goddamn Israelite. He's a Persian. But through God, God used Cyrus to free the Israelites. When you hear people talking about Donald Trump, Donald Trump is the new Cyrus, they don't understand what's going on because our people are not that sophisticated. Donald Trump declared Israel the capital, right? They saying, oh, he likes Cyrus. He giving us back Jerusalem because this is biblical. That's what people don't get out. People way behind, bro. We got to bring us up to speed. But there's so much stuff going on that niggas like me look real crazy, right? Because I'm, I'm their own people and they think I'm crazy. It's crazy. Mm -mm. I'm trying to find something else. It's 
Deuteronomy 30, 30 and, damn man, what is it? I'm trying to show you where God, where God said who he was going to use, the people that he would use. And I used to know that, bro. Now I got to dig in my Bible hub, right? I got so many verses that when you learn one, you, you be pushing them out, but, and they not just to learn or repeat. I learn them so I could live by them or share them with other people, right? Um, he will have my words. See where it's at. It's, it's Deuteronomy, I believe. Yeah, I'm pulling it up, bro. Appreciate you coming through, Big E. I definitely appreciate you, bro. If it's just one people hearing what the Most High said, it, it was worth it. I did, I did my job. You know what I'm saying? Uh 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 uh. Da 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 Prophets, man. Yeah, we are, bro. We we Israel by the covenant, right? It's not a um a bloodline thing because Abraham wasn't a bloodline Israel, uh, Israelite, I'm sorry. Abraham was from the Chaldeans, which in today, modern day is Iran. So he was Iranian, dark skin. They not the same people that was back then. And he stopped being a pagan, right? Abraham stopped doing the customs of his people. And he started keeping these traditions that God had gave him. That made him Abraham the Hebrew because Hebrew means the crossover from the other side. And he had a son, Jacob, right? Jacob is where the name Israel came from. Jacob was struggling with God. Jacob struggled with God and over. Yo, we still here? Hey, you still up in the joint? But yeah, we, we Israelites by, by the covenant of God, right? That covenant makes us Israelites. Inside that covenant, that's our struggle with God and to overcome it. Because Jacob wrestled with God all night and he prevailed. So that's why we call Israel. Because you struggle with God, but you overcame. So it's not a color. It's not a race. It's not a creed. It's just that law that we not like other nations. They eat seafood. We don't eat seafood. They adulterers. We not adulterers. They look to the stars for like zodiac signs and shit like that. That came from Abraham. Abraham's people started astrology, you know, the Chaldeans that came from his region of what you would call Babylon, the Babylonians, pretty much Chaldeans. They did this stuff. When you hear the Babylonian empire, these are the same people. So when you hear Babylon, it's just somebody that gave up on the ways of Babylon, which is Abraham. He did, which was pleasing to God. So they call Abraham the father of the faith. That's why God chose Abraham to have nations through because he knew it was in Abraham. Even though they was pagans, he knew it was in Abraham to keep the laws of God. So he chose Abraham to send his nation through. You know what I'm saying? And that's the covenant of God. He told Abraham, you're going to be the father great of many nations. And Jacob, his son, Jacob is who he chose to make that covenant with. Abraham's first son is Ishmael who started the Muslim nation, right? So those are Ishmaelites. You dig, bro? We got Ishmaelites. We got Israelites. We got Edomites. All of these are just the nations from the names of people. So nations were basically off whatever your name was. If I went somewhere and I'm Evan and I established this, this population, that's Evansville, right? We the Evianites. Or everybody's named after the progenitor. 
So when you went in different lands, the names change. So Egypt is Mizrahim. That means bondage. Everybody that lived in Egypt wasn't Egyptian. It was just the land. You understand what I'm saying? So we got a lot of stuff messed up saying who we are. That's why I go with nationality. You claim the land that you in, but you know your descendancy from which you come. So I'm an American nationalist because the land is America. You know what I'm saying? That's where my rights come in. All your rights come from you being born to God, you being sovereign. So I don't have any rights over any other man per God and no man have any other rights over me. Anything you and I participate in, E, we got to sign into that. Applications, licensing, all of that shit. When you asking for permission, you saying, can I be a part of that? Now, you give up rights when you a part of something, but in return, you get something back. So what do you get back for being in this policy with these police and a speeding ticket? Because it's a contract. If you don't get anything back, it's a bad contract. You pay income taxes on your money that for the government. What do you get back from that? Or say I came to your house right now, E, and help you take some furniture upstairs and you paid me $200. Do the government have a right to come in and ask for any of that money? No. But when you fill out job applications, if you're not careful about it, they put it in a small fine print. You don't have to pay taxes. It's called the W-8 beneficial form. But it's a fight. And I'm doing it now, but it's just me. When the whole nation understand this, then they'll push it back to what it's supposed to be. There's no law saying any of us have to pay income taxes. It's actually a W-8 beneficial form to non-U.S. citizens. I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm an American nationalist. I'm trying to teach people this too. And it's the law. They keep telling you some other shit from your birth, your mom, your dad. Well, they don't know any better either. All of us have been fooled, but we in an age of technology. We in an age of discovery. We in an age of information. And I got all the information. And I apply it. And I try to show people with the police stuff, you see me outside representing that. That's the law. With this thing of God, I'm representing this too. I don't deal with policies. Jesus is a policy that white people gave you. That's a protection policy to keep you in line. The word of God is going to deliver you into what you're supposed to be. And we all going to die. But meanwhile, while you living, you live in the peace that God is supposed to have for you. That's it. No more, no less. I ain't going to be no taller. I ain't going to be bulletproof. None of that. But I won't need to be bulletproof if you're not murdering anybody. You understand? And, and any nigga that's trying to murder me right now, you going to get murdered. Not because I'm going to do it. Because I'm doing something for God right now while you just being a fuck nigga causing calamity. So as long as I walk in this divinity, these niggas can't do nothing to me, E. That's why I walk like I walk. That's why I'm in these police faces. Because if you kill me, you're going to kill me outside the law. Then, then it'll be on, right? We all going to die. I know that. So knowing that, I ain't scared to live. Once people understand that, they can walk in God's, in God's boldness. But niggas scared to check out. I got cursed. Well, what I thought was a curse was a blessing. I got sick, right? And I was looking at checking out. And when that happened, reality kick in. All that emotional this, emotional that, it don't mean shit. I got a son, a daughter, and a wife, right? I wasn't going to see them anymore. All that fancy talk, all that shit went out right out the window. So then I got real. I was like, is God real? I need to see if he real because I'm about to see him. I'm about to meet him. So I dug into these words and it wasn't nothing like we had learned our whole life. I'm celebrating Christmas my whole life. God say don't celebrate that. You know, I'm celebrating a lot of stuff. God say I'm not celebrating that. So I stopped celebrating the stuff. Bro, I don't know when your birthday is, E, but I got to love you today, bro. You could be out of here tomorrow. I don't know when you're going to pass. This is why I stay on you about, yo, bro, I'm going to get with you. You might be planning on getting with me, but we don't know. Like, they gave me six months, right? That's what they said, six months. It was people that died before my six months was up. They planning birthdays. You wasting time planning to celebrate days that's coming. 
Every day that you have is a day you're supposed to rejoice and walk in the boldness of God. Like, I can't wait for my daughter's birthday to say she's special. Then I pass or she passed, but for her birthday, I got these big plans. Now I'm stuck. It's her birthday. Then every time her birthday come, now I'm sad because it's her birthday. Now the day that she passed away, I'm sad because it's that day. But if I loved her hard today, if I loved her hard yesterday, those days are all the same. She got 100% from me every day. It didn't matter that somebody said it's her birthday or it's this or that. I love her. My son, everybody the same. So when we talk about tomorrow, I understand it. But here's the thing about time. God didn't create a clock. God didn't create time. So all the time is his. You know what I'm saying? We created time. And to show you that, in China right now, they saying it's another time than I'm saying. In London right now, they five hours different from me. But it's one sun and it's one moon. How can the times be different? How? It's one time. It's just one time. Man broke that up. So time is not ours to give. It's God's. You know, we know day and night. We know seasons. What we do know is seasons, and that's by the animals. Because the spring is filled with newness and life, right? And the spring of the year is fresh vegetation. Animals go in the heat in a certain time so they can bring forth their life in spring. When there's vegetation out here, a plenty for them to graze on. When actually there's new animals out here. Like somebody's offspring is going to be food to another animal. Y'all understand? And that seemed cruel to us, but that's in the order of God. He takes care of everything one way or the other, and everything is channeled back through. That life that those animals eat, it's going to be devoured and shitted out, right? And it's going to be fertilizer or something for some other life. So it's a connection. When you go into the ground, that's where you came from. You returning back to those ashes, right? Everything that's in this, in this universe is a part of you. Any particle, anything you smell, you smell a fart, those are particles. Now that p fart is a part of you. You smell a dead body, those particles, microscopic, something is creating a smell. So now that's part of you. Everything is created. This is what God is. All of it, bro. And it's not that evolution that they say where we turn into different shit. Evolution is... It's raining outside. I got to put up an umbrella. I evolved from getting drenched, right? Before, they didn't have shoes. They evolved into covering their feet. You dig it? Some things are metamorphosis. Some things are evolution. A butterfly and a caterpillar, they don't evolve. That's a metamorphosis. When you change from one thing to something else. Evolution is, is changing in the way you deal with certain things. Some things are small evolution. Some things are big evolution. It's like the telephone, the evolution of the telephone. This is the evolution of the telephone, right? You don't got that big ass rotary joint that you could bust somebody in the fucking head with. You have to take your fingers and be a weightlifter to turn that bitch. It's like, shake it, dig, 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 shake it, dig, 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 dig. Evolution, right? But we still talk on the phone. We still communicate, but the way we communicate change, right? So this is what they do with the Bible. They say, oh, we don't do that no more. No, we still do it, but the method of doing it is different. Before, say, we listen to the word of God playing a harp. But now, you don't listen to the word playing a harp. It went to A-track. You listen to the word of God playing A-track. Since A-track got done away with, did the word of God get done away with? No, you went to cassette tape. When cassette tape got done away with, did the word of God get done away with? No, you went to CDs. When CDs got done away with, did the word of God get done away with? No, you went to streaming, digital. So it's never going to be done away with. The evolution of how you do it might change, but it's always going to be God with everything, bro. Hit me up, E, man. You know what I'm saying? Hit me up, bro. We need, to, we need to get up, man. It's been a long time. And you too close. Like, you're not drawn to this for no reason, bro. You've been hollering at me for, for a second. Like, holler at me. I ain't no holy person. I'm the same, same 
It don't work no other way. If I'm not my regular self, brothers like you not going to hear it. You don't need that bullshit that you get on Sunday to feel like, yo, I, I can't do that shit. They don't even know it. Those people on Sunday today, they living in wickedness, bro. They idolaters. They worshiping a Jesus on the cross, graven images. Then it's a man on top of that. Psalms 82 and 6 say, ye all are gods. God say, have no other God before me. It ain't no other way to look at it. Ye all are gods and have no other God before me. How are we going to do this? The math is right there. Either you believing in God's word or you afraid because you scared to offend Jesus. I'll offend Jesus every goddamn day of the week, but I won't offend God because it's God and God alone. There's none beside me, none before me, none after me, including Jesus. And if God didn't mention Jesus, what are we talking about? I heard him mention his son. For anybody, for anybody that's curious, did God ever say he had a son? Yeah, he did. And um, I'm going to show you his name. This is the name of God's son. I got you, bro. Black folks scared not to worship any but Jesus, even if God came down and told him, my brother, my brother, my brother. I hear you, E. I hear you. I hear you, bro. That's my brother, man. Look, this is Exodus 4 and 22. This is where God revealed the name of his son. So if anybody want to say God's son name is Jesus E, you tell them this. This is Exodus 4 and 22. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son. This is the only mention of God's son in the Bible at all. And he's talking about all of us, Israel, the covenant. Whoever keeping that covenant is his son because Israel isn't one person. Israel is a nation, the nation of Israel. So Exodus, can you see that? In my book, I use the Hebrew because that's what it was written in. It's Exodus 4 and 22. The Old Testament is what they call it, but it's the Tanakh or Torah, which just means instructions. And it's not white. It's not Yiddish. It's actually brown people like you and I that did this. So they calling us black. That's where the disconnect is. Those people from that region, they migrated everywhere. Facial features change. Traditions change. We got family in the South, right? That talk differently from us. On the West Coast, them niggas rocking khakis and chucks. Over here, we rocking Tims and shit, right? You got West Coast bloods and East Coast bloods. But the law is the same. So you dress different and you talk different, but it's one God. So what happened during that, people start having their own spin on what God is. You got this set of Crips, this set of Bloods, the Rolling Sixties, Pyrus, all these different sets with their own traditions. And then it get to the point where they just kick God out of it all together and it become the tradition of man. That's what we living in right now. The traditions of man, where we didn't just say F whatever God said, right? Jesus' is son. Show me where God said Jesus was his son. I could show you where God said out oh, his mouth, Israel is my firstborn son. Tell Pharaoh that. Did he ever say that about Jesus? They got to make it fit. Oh, here's where Jesus was there in the beginning. See, he said, let us make man in our image. He talking about Jesus right there. No, he not, bitch. He ain't say nothing about Jesus. Don't tell me that lie. Show me Jesus like I just showed you Israel. Because God is a deliberate God. And when he say something, you don't have to figure it out. So where did he say Jesus is my son? My only begotten son. And I don't want to hear about that shit from whatever it is, Matthew, where a voice came from the sky. Not a voice. Thus saith the Lord. Because anybody could be a voice. And that's that Roman, that Greek mythology shit. A voice came from the sky. They was even too scared to say God said it because they know they would have been punished for telling that lie. So in the New Testament, you won't see anywhere where thus saith the Lord or God said anything because he ain't talking. All his talking was in the Tanakh, Torah, Old Testament. 
and Deuteronomy 13 say don't add to it. So what's this New Testament? Deuteronomy 4 and 2 say don't add to it. So what's this New Testament? Men of God, all you pastors, every Sunday with your job suit wearing ass, where did this New Testament come from, nigga? And I ain't playing. Like, don't talk that smooth shit to me. Show me where God said Jesus was his son. Are you a goddamn deceiver, nigga? That's what y'all are, and that's why I'm here. I know they shook I saw two pastors come in. They ain't say shit. I ain't going to call y'all names out. I'm going to give y'all chances to read that book because y'all are supposed to be men of God. Then I'm going to start throwing darts at y'all. I'm going to ask y'all. I'm going to ask y'all for a, a, a private, not a private, a public debate for you to stand on the word that you teaching our people every Sunday in that goddamn abomination that you call a church. That's going to happen pretty soon. So y'all been warned. You got time, right, to get your doctrine and your scripts together per God, not per me, not per you. Your lazy ass need to dig into those scripts like you promised to do as a man of God and deliver them to our people. You need to sit your dumb ass down. Well, I'm going to fry y'all. I'm going to come here and be abrasive as I can. I'm going to force you out that goddamn Christianity or people are going to see you for the liar that you are. Because it's those times now. It's too many lies. It's too many, it's too many ways to see the truth. And I'm going to keep raining this truth down on y'all dumbasses on behalf of God. Not behalf of religion. Not behalf of your prosperity preaching. Not no good news. All right, bro. My man. I'm, I'm winding up anyway because I was going on. I'm about to get something to drink and smoke some weed for all you Christian ch church pastors. Show me where you can't smoke weed at. Now go ahead and try to maneuver through the sober thing so I can pull that word sober up on your deceitful ass and prove to people that you don't know anything about God. And this ain't per me. I don't need my pay, PayPal, my, my, what is it, the other one? The Cash App, the GoFundMe. This one on the house for the Most High God because he take care of all my needs, right? Period. That's what it's for. But if you really want to find out what he said, the word inbox me. We can build all day with the actual word of God. So you can move towards that way. Get out of that church on Sunday, man. You're not going to find God there. Peace.